Hey guys, so today I'm filming my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls number 23. If you guys have never seen this video from me before, I'll have my playlist linked down below. And basically I'll be reviewing all the products and I featured in a haul from about 10 months back, letting you know my current thoughts on those products. My inspiration for this series was it's Kirsten and her What I Thought on Stuff I Bought series. I'll have her channel and her playlist linked down below. A lot of other people are doing this now, but Kirsten was the first person I saw do it, and I want to give her the credit she deserves. I will have the original haul video linked down below, and I will also list and link all the products that I am going to be talking about today. This is going to be a long video. I purchased so many things it was disgusting but I did get almost all of them on sale which is how I justify my makeup purchases I know it is a problem so first were two products I received from influencer this would be the YSL Touche Claw blur primer and blur perfecter I do have an entire review video on these products I'll have linked up here I don't like them they didn't do anything for me this primer has gold flex in it did nothing to prolong the wear of my makeup. It didn't keep me from getting oily. It didn't do anything for my pores. This, no. For the Blur Perfector, it has the most beautiful packaging. It is so pretty. And you're supposed to be able to use this three ways. You're supposed to be able to use this on its own as a product to set your makeup and to touch up throughout the day. I did not like it as a touch up. I did not like it to set my makeup. I need like a real heavy duty powder. I loved it when I wore it on its own, but what's the point of wearing a product, especially a $40, $50 product on its own? So these are not worth the money. They didn't do a darn thing for me. If you want more details, check out that review. Next, I had two models own nail polishes that I purchased from Live Love Polish when there was a 10% off coupon code. Now, Just Face 90X had done a review video on this collection, which is why I purchased these. I love Just's nail reviews. They are one of my favorites. There are several nail girls on YouTube that I watch, but Just does a really fantastic job. And I thought these colors were just staples for the summertime. So the first shade I have is Beach Bag which is this really pretty neon peach and shades which is this neon warm pink these are really pretty I don't love them as much as I thought I would and these are a little bit expensive I think they were around nine or ten dollars they're a little too expensive for me the colors are really pretty but I don't love them so I was a bit disappointed I am going to wear them this summer hopefully love them more so they are just okay but I wouldn't say like run out and go buy them they're not the most unique either Next, I had purchased three nail polishes from Zoya. These were from last year's summer collection. And the shades that I have would be Serenity, Cecilia, and Talia. So even though that these were part of a summer collection, I feel like these are gorgeous cream finish jewel tones that are perfect for fall. So I'll be wearing these this fall. So I have already worn Talia and Cecilia. They are gorgeous cream polishes, opaque in two coats. Talia is a beautiful peacock blue and Cecilia is this really nice teal shade. Then for this purple Serenity, I've not worn it yet, but I need to. So I love Zoya nail polishes. It is one of my favorite brands. Their creams are amazing. I have some absolute holy grail polishes from them. So I purchased these polishes during Zoya's semi-annual sale where they have get three polishes free with the price of shipping. So shipping costs $15. So I was able to get each of these polishes for five bucks when normally they retail for eight or nine. So I thought that was a really, really great deal. And I think that that sale should be coming up any time now so please let me know in a comment down below your favorite Zoya nail polishes I think I want to get Rocky and Robin which are two blues but you guys know I can never have too many blues in my collection like I love blue polish so please let me know your favorite Zoya's because I need to compile a list for that sale coming up but these are really really amazing formulas beautiful colors I highly recommend Zoya polishes next I have four Clinique cheek pop blushes these were four of the eight new shades that they had released at the time I was able to get these on sale my sister got them for me on a double discount day at Belk so basically you have the 20% off regular employee discount and they get an extra 20% so you take 20 off your total then 20 off your new total so I was able to get these for a pretty decent deal. I have the shade Melon Pop. This is Pink Pop. 
I have Rosy Pop and Heather Pop. So in addition to these four Clinique Cheek Pops, I also have Ginger Pop and Peach Pop, which are holy grail to me. I think that Clinique Cheek Pops are a really nice formula. I also like the packaging. It is this thick, clear acrylic plastic, and you have the beautiful flower daisy pattern. And this pattern is so deep that even when you wear these over and over and over again, the pattern will still last. So I think that is really, really cool. This is a very unique formula. It is more of a hard texture. It isn't really creamy. It doesn't pick up product really easily. So I do have to use a dense angled blush brush to really pick up the product. But once you do, it's beautiful. And also these are really buildable blushes. So if you are someone that likes a light wash of color for the daytime and then if you want to be more dramatic you can just add a couple more layers and get that really intense cheek which I like. You guys know I prefer cheeks that are intense right off the bat but it is nice to be able to build these up. So I really do love this blush formula but not as much as I used to. Peach Pop and Ginger Pop are still Holy Grail blushes of mine, but I could do without all these other shades. Now they are super pretty, and like I said, they are buildable. They can be very pigmented, but I just prefer blushes from MAC and the Balm that are really pigmented, a little powdery, but really pigmented right from the jump. So I don't gravitate towards these as much as I do those other blushes. So I do like them, but I don't love them. But I do think they would work for so many people because they are that buildable formula. Next I had purchased some products from Colourpop of course. So the first thing was a very very limited edition tie-dye eyeshadow in the shade Summer Lovin' which is a beautiful rose gold. Now there were three limited edition tie-dye eyeshadows and one tie-dye blush that were available for like five days. This is a really pretty color but honestly not that unique. This is very similar to basically the other 100 rose gold shadows that ColourPop has released that I have like all of them. So if you have a maze or Lala, you don't need this. It's really pretty, but it's not necessary. So you definitely did not miss out on anything if you were not able to get this. So here is a swatch of Summer Lovin'. Next I purchased one of the lippy sticks from their summer collection. This is the shade Toucan, which is a beautiful pink tone red with a matte finish. This is a dupe for MAC Relentlessly Red. So I have that lippy stick swatched right here. This is a gorgeous red. I've never worn it. I know, like punch me in the face. I need to wear this because it is a beautiful color. It is definitely the red that would be most wearable for me. I am okay wearing vampy colors, bright colors, but for some reason, reds make me very self-conscious and super intimidated. My lips are really uneven and they show up really obviously when I'm wearing a bright color like this. So I need to challenge myself to wear this because it is a, it really is a beautiful, beautiful color but uh haven't worn it yet but i do love the matte finish lippy sticks from ColourPop. then i had purchased three of the ColourPop ultra matte lips i do have an entire review video on these i'll have that video linked up here so these were the original release and the original formula which i prefer the original formula over the new formula most people feel the opposite from me but I love the OG formula here. So the colors that I have would be top to bottom, Midi, Seesaw, and Solo. I love them all. Solo is my favorite. This is one of my ColourPop must-haves. Video coming very soon. But these colors are so beautiful. Midi is a beautiful pinky beige nude. Seesaw is a really bright blue tone pink. And Solo is a gorgeous dusty salmon shade. So here are swatches of the ultra matte lips. You have Midi, Seesaw, and Solo. These are all one swipe, completely opaque as you can see. The OG formulas do dry down completely matte. They are a little bit drying, but I do prefer that fully matte finish so I can handle the fact that they are drying. I love them so much. I really wish the old formula was still available. I have purchased some of the new formulas and they're okay. I'm only really going to buy them if I want specific colors, but 
I really miss the old formula and I'm glad that I have my favorite shades in the old formula. Next I had purchased some things from Ulta. The first thing was the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I have gone through two of these. This is my second one. I need to repurchase this. It has a bunch of tears and rips in it. Right now I have three times the point, so that is going to be the time to go and purchase these. This is absolutely amazing. I really love this. I use it every other day. I also have the Pure Cosmetic Sponge. I rotate between the two. I love using the flat side to apply my foundation and the pointed side to apply my concealer and my under eye setting powder. This is an incredible sponge. It is so soft. It does not soak up any product. I highly recommend this if you guys have not tried it to apply your foundation and concealer. I think it is amazing. Then I had purchased the NYX Mineral Set It Don't Fret It Loose Powder in Light Medium. This only comes in two shades, Light Medium and Medium Deep. Light Medium is a little bit dark for me, but I am able to make it work, especially if I do use it in the summertime. This is my all-time favorite loose powder. It doesn't really give you much coverage. It gives a tiny bit of coverage and a tiny bit of color, but not a ton. But this is an amazing powder that just glides over pores and lines. It doesn't settle into them or emphasize them. It is amazing. This is absolutely my favorite loose powder. I have repurchased it before. I would repurchase it again. I would recommend it. I do prefer pressed powders because I do like that extra coverage, but if I decide that I want to go back to using a loose powder, this will definitely be the one that I buy. Then I had also received an email for a Platinum Perk that I could get a free sample of the IT Cosmetics Hello Lashes Extension Mascara. Haven't used this. I have a huge back stock of deluxe sample size mascaras that I'm trying to work through. So haven't used this one yet. Next, I have purchased quite a few things from Ulta during their 40% off sale, which happens usually every summer. It has already happened this year, unfortunately, and I was hoping that they would have NYX and Maybelline because I had a huge wish list. Neither of those brands are part of the sale this year, which is really, really depressing. It was Revlon, Physicians Formula, and some other brands. I don't know. None of the brands that I wanted. I was very disappointed, okay? I had such a long wish list. I was really disappointed. I know sometimes Rite Aid, Walgreens, CVS will do 40% off other drugstore brands, which I do love to purchase from, but I would rather buy them for 40% off from Ulta so I can get rewards points and whatnot. So a little bummed that none of the brands that I wanted to buy from were part of the sale this year, but last year I did get some great things. I purchased some things from NYX and L'Oreal. I had also purchased a bunch of things for my mom from L'Oreal, which she loves and is still using. L'Oreal is like her all-time favorite brand for me basically none of the products work for me, which is a bit of a bummer, but I still purchased quite a few L'Oreal things that I wanted to try out. The first thing I had purchased was the NYX Micro Brow Pencil and Taupe. This was a repurchase. This is my holy grail brow pencil. This does the most fantastic job of drawing in my brows. It has a really nice precise point. The color is great for me. This sticks to brow hair and to skin. Holy grail, must have, highly recommend. The next product I had purchased was the NYX HD Finishing Powder. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Makeup Forever HD Powder. No, I did not like this at all. It did set my makeup, but it wasn't finely milled. It did not look super natural on the skin. I didn't like this at all. Highly recommend the NYX Set It, Don't Fret It. Do not at all recommend the NYX HD. Then I had purchased a L'Oreal Silk Gissime liner in the shade Cobalt Blue. I've heard really amazing things about the formula of these liners. I had purchased a teal one for my mom and that's when I saw that they had a Cobalt. I've never used it. I know! Shame on me! It is seriously so gorgeous and really creamy. There is a swatch of it there. Super creamy and pigmented. I've never used it. Shame on me. I need to use it this summer. I need to. Hold me accountable. I need to use this. Sh shame on me. I am so embarrassed by how many things I haven't used. Shame for shame. Then I had purchased the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Plumper in the shade Light Medium. I had purchased one of these for my mom. I had tried out hers. I really liked it. So I purchased one for myself. This is what it looks like. It does have a little bit of a metallic finish to it, but it does not look metallic in your brows. I have heard that metallic brow gels are supposed to really emphasize the brow hairs, make them look more natural. I don't know about all that. This is okay. I'm using it now. 
it's just okay. I much, much, much prefer my NYX Tinted Brow Mascara. I love the wand, the formula, and the color. The color is what I really like about the NYX is because it's a little bit lighter than my brow hairs, so it really just draws attention to every single brow hair and makes them look more natural and not so drawn on. This is okay. You get a lot of product, but I'm excited to use it up and move on to some other brow gels because it's just okay. Speaking of products I haven't used, this is the L'Oreal Miss Manga Rock Mascara. Girl, I'll be trying to work through all those sample size. I have two full size ones that I haven't used. I need to before they dry out. Like, I'm afraid of mascaras drying out before you even open them. Like, can that happen? I'm sure it can after so long, but I've not used it yet, okay? I've just, I've not. I'm excited to but I've not used it yet. Next, I had purchased one of the Laura Geller Baked Gelato Vivid Swirl Blushes in the shade Guava. How beautiful is this? Like, oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. Hope from Beauty and Bliss 67 had posted a picture of this and one other shade on her Instagram, and I had to go buy it. I did purchase this full price, but I believe I got three times the points for it. I was treating myself because this is so beautiful. So right here is a swatch of guava. It is a beautiful satin finish blush. So this is a really pretty blush. It is really pigmented, but I have a really hard time applying it because of the formula. It just doesn't pick up that easy. So I am going to try using this this summer with my angle blush brush, seeing if I'm able to pick up enough product that way. I've never used the baked gelato swirl highlighters, but uh, this is a beautiful blush. The formula is not my favorite because it's a little bit more difficult to work with, but the color is amazing. Next, I have some random products. I was just in the mood to buy things, and I purchased a whole bunch of random things from Walmart. The first thing I had purchased was the Philips Milk of Magnesia, and I had purchased this to use as a primer. I did use this a couple times, but I haven't used it in so long. I need to use this again. It's supposed to be a great primer for oily skin, and I'm about to be super greasy because it is just summertime, so I will use this again, use it more, and let you guys know whether I feel like it actually works for me. Then I had purchased the Equate brand wedge sponges. I was going to use those to set under my eyes and to bake. I much prefer using the pointed side of my Real Technique sponge, so I don't use those anymore. They're fine, but I just prefer the Real Technique sponge. Then I had purchased the Salon Perfect Dotting Tools. I got them because they were really cheap or on clearance. I've never used them. I don't do nail art. I don't know why I bought them. Then I had purchased the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer and Reserve Your Cabana, which is that nice light champagne highlight shade. I've heard from a ton of people they love using this to set their under eyes, to use as a natural cheekbone highlight on their decollete. I've tried it don't like it. It just, the formula in the shade just does not work for me. I tried using it on my under eyes and it just made my under eyes look too dark. Tried it on my cheekbones, not light enough for me. So I know a lot of people love that, but it just didn't work for me. Next was a mascara I had purchased on clearance at Target that everyone had been raving about. This is the L'Oreal Telescopic Shocking Extensions Mascara. This is supposed to be really awesome for length. First off, I didn't notice any extensions up in here. This was just like the regular telescopic mascara. This was okay for length, but I didn't love it. Brushes like this don't do anything for me because they're too small and the bristles are too small. So this was okay. Would not go out of my way to purchase it and I'm not going to purchase any of the other L'Oreal telescopic mascaras. Then I had purchased the Maybelline Colossal Chaotic Mascara, which I love Maybelline mascaras. Maybelline is my favorite mascara brand. This is what the brush looks like. It is a really nice full brush with natural bristles, a wet formula. My favorite things, love wet formula and natural bristle brushes. This was okay. This did give nice volume. I did really like it. It was in my 2015 favorites, but I'm realizing that it's a good mascara, but I would not repurchase it because it does not beat my Holy Grail mascaras, which would be the Maybelline Colossal Cat Eyes, the Maybelline Falsies Original, and the Rimmel Lash Accelerator. Those are my all-time favorite mascaras. This one is okay, but not as good as those. So the Colossal Chaotic was part of a new release from Maybelline, as well as a couple other products that I had purchased. First thing was one of the 10 new shades to the Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipstick range, and I had only purchased one of them. This is the shade Blushing Pout. 
So this is what Blushing Pout looks like. It is a really beautiful light mauve pink. I think this shade is gorgeous. I think I've worn it once or twice. I know, shame on me, but I love the formula of the Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipsticks. I do have a review. I will link it up here. They are really comfortable. They feel really, really smooth. The one thing is when you do reapply and layer them, they do tend to cake up, especially in the corners of your lips. Other than that, they're perfect. I really, really love this formula. I have four different shades that I absolutely adore, so highly recommend the Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipsticks. Then I purchased two of the Maybelline Color Blurs and the lightest two shades I'm blushing in. I like to mauve it. I do have a review on those. I'll have it linked up here. The colors are really pretty, but I do not like the formula. For some reason, it made my lips feel so dry and tight. I would rather wear any liquid lipstick over the Maybelline color blurs. I don't know what it was about that formula, but it did not agree with my lips whatsoever. So I do not recommend them. I haven't really heard of many other people having that same experience. So I would say give it a try, but keep your receipt. But for me, will not be purchasing any more of those shades and I did get rid of mine. Then I had gotten two things from CVS. I had returned some things and basically gotten these for free because of reward dollars and my return money. So these are basically for free. So can't beat that. First thing is a repurchase. This is the Wet n Wild Fergie Mattifying Take on the Day Powder. I have repressed this one. I thought this was being discontinued. I freaked out. I have this one and three backups. I purchased a bunch. Some of my friends sent them to me because everyone knew how much I love this. So it has not been discontinued. Fergie is no longer affiliated with Wet n Wild. So this is now just the Wet n Wild Mattifying Powder. Part of their permanent regular line. It looks the same. Same formula. It just does not say Fergie on the package anymore but I'm real happy I was able to get all of those for like 50 75 percent off like cannot complain about that this is a fantastic under eye setting powder it is a dupe for the NARS translucent crystal light reflecting setting powder press but this one is better because with the NARS you had to scrape off like half the product to get to the good stuff but this one is good from the jump I love using this to set the under eyes it has a really nice reflection to it but it isn't really shimmery shiny amazing. If you have really dry under eyes, I think you'll like this as well because you only need the tiniest amount of powder to set your under eyes because of the formula with that silica in it. It's amazing. Highly, highly, highly recommend this for all skin types to use as an under eye setting powder. I wouldn't really recommend it for the whole face, but for under eyes, really good. The last product is what I'm wearing on my brows today. This is the Milani Stay Put Brow Color in the shade number two natural taupe, which is the perfect shade for blondes. I do have a first impression on this product. I'll have that linked up here. This is fantastic. It works just as well as the Anastasia Dip Brow. It comes in quite a few shades and it is very inexpensive. I do not use this very often or any of my dip brow pomade type products because I much prefer using pencil and powder. But if I'm wanting a more dramatic brow, this is definitely a go-to of mine. Highly recommend this if you are looking to try a brow pomade at an affordable price. So guys, that was my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls number 23. I would love to know your thoughts if you've tried out any of these products. Let me know if you do a video like this on your channel so I can go check it out. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.